Hi, this is Richard Harmon, and you are watching the Permanent Rain Press. I am happy to be joined once again by Richard Harmon. How are you? I'm fantastic. Thank you for having me, other than this, this heat wave that we're in the middle of. I know it's it's really bad this weekend, as we were just saying, the worst we've ever seen in Vancouver. But um, you were just saying you moved into a new place, so that's exciting. I did, and it's also it's a lot. There's a lot of windows in here, and it's it's really bad for the heat. <laughs> but the views must be spectacular. The views are great. The views are great. It makes it worth it, and I'm sure winter is going to be very pleasant. Yeah. So you've been in BC, like the whole time I think this past year have you picked up any unique skills or hobbies that you can now add to your resume yeah I mean I guess absolutely cooking I'm a I now cook most of my meals which is something I've always loved good food but I always went elsewhere to get it um and now I just absolutely love making it myself so I guess COVID was good for that um and I golf a lot more than I used to golf that's for sure are you a pro yet God, no, I, I've barely gotten better, but I, I love it. What are some things you've been cooking at home? Well, just the other day, I made a Japanese beef stew. That was good. I made my own homemade dashi, which is actually very easy. Um, I made a turkey cubano for my mom the other day when she came over. That was nice. I think she seemed to enjoy that. Yeah, I'm probably just happy that you're now cooking by yourself. Okay, yeah. it's like it's, the little boys become a man. <laughs> so we are here today, obviously, to talk about the Leo Awards. In the background, I see that you actually have more than that. I think I can see two. Are there, there are hey. three, um, <laughs> which again, if, if hey, if you- was on purpose. <laughs> wasn't that on purpose at all, but if you sweep your, your nominations again this year, you'll basically double that amount, three nominations. If I even get one, I'll be lucky. But I'm very glad to be up for for uh, for the awards again. Yeah, the three the three came as a surprise to me, for sure. I actually wasn't aware I was even up for one until a week later when someone told me. Pleasant surprise, but um, you've been busy. Very, very pleasant surprise. Darkness Falls, Pearl in the Mist, The Hundred. For each of these projects, what did you take away from that experience? And and you know, stepping into the shoes of the characters well I'll start with the hundred which is the obvious place to start this is obviously uh, for our last season so seven seventh season um what I took away from that show was I mean it completely changed my life that I took more away from that show than I've taken away from anything else that I've ever done in 20 years um yeah like I said it completely changed my life it got me this apartment that I'm in so that's good uh it gave me some of the best friends I've ever had best bosses best people to kind of learn from on the job uh so that's fantastic uh and I'm glad I'm up for the final season so one one last kick of the can I suppose for this one um Pearl in the Mist well actually I'll go in chronological order uh Darkness Falls I shot in LA and that was a ton of fun because I got to work with Gary Cole um sean ashmore and they're awesome um that was just a ton of fun and kind of like this very interesting fun modern noir serial killer story which was really cool uh, and our director julian is actually from france so that was a really it, it truly like such a different kind of environment and and way to work than I'm used to and it was awesome because he, he sort of just set up these scenes like it was a beautiful painting and the actors just got to be in them and it was awesome. Uh, Pearl in the Mist was actually the first thing I did during the pandemic so that was in like August so that was a very different experience for me and that's what I kind of took away from that very different experience wearing the masks like the students were cut and all that sweating underneath the mask and the face visors and, and all that kind of stuff but the people that were on it were just so much fun to work with um yeah and it was i guess it was a challenge it was playing a, a blind character which is actually the second time i played a blind character um definitely never gets easier and you or like you care about it less you definitely have to give your your all into into not doing that wrong <laughs> for lack of a better term. 
Speaking of, you know, that fa- that wonderful family movie was the yes. the first character you played that was blind. So I'm sure you got to kind of carry that over um, and those experiences on that set. It, it made me, it was, it allowed me to relax just a little bit more this time, knowing that I've done it before, um, uh, which was good because there was so much going on with the character outside of that, that you have to focus on that if you're focusing just so heavily on one of the physical traits of the character, it would have been hard to do the rest of it. So, so to be able to relax just a little bit more this time around was a, was a big blessing. To have a year like you did in film and TV, despite you know the hard year that was 2020, is that something that you've been like consciously thinking about? Yes, because uh, it, w- it was a, definitely a hard year. I was very lucky to have worked a couple times. Um, but I'm like, I wanna work more. I wanna get back out there. Uh, so yeah, it was it was a tough year, but you know I, I'm proud of all of us in this in this business and in this town to kind of work through it. And we're not there yet, but hopefully, hopefully one day soon we will be. We got to see you in Kung Fu on the CW, yeah. one of my new favorite shows this season. Yep. How much fun was it to jump into that set for that that guest spot? So much fun, um, especially because they, they, the, their studios actually were the old The 100 Studios. They were the show that took over after we were done. So that was a little odd to kind of go in there when we weren't the ones in charge anymore. It was a completely different show and I was the guest all of a sudden. Um, but they were so lovely. Uh, and Olivia and Eddie specifically, who I worked with in Chelsea, they were awesome. Like they have got some great actors on that show. Um, the writers are super, super friendly. And the guys who do all the stunts for there actually worked on the hundred for years. So that for me was like a little slice of home and being able to work with them again. How much fun was that action sequence to, to be a part of? I, I don't think you want it, but it must have I don't, been never, fun. I never win. When was the last time you ever saw me win a fight? I fight all the time. I just never win fights. I'm very good at losing, <laughs> clearly. Um, it was awesome and because it was a, so different than the hundred fight scenes where it's a little more like vicious and, and, and dirty. Uh, this was very, not on my side of the fight, on the other side of the fight, very composed. And we got to do like prop stunts with like the chairs and stuff, which was a bit of like a Jackie Chan sort of homage with me getting knocked over the chair, but the chair only going back 45 degrees. When they built this like hydraulic chair to pull that off. It was so much fun, so much fun. Did you fall off the chair at all? Only when they only when they needed me to. <laughs> okay, so there weren't any like accidental spills off the the angled chair. <laughs> yeah, they had, they had it super super safely set up. And next, we'll be seeing you as Kale, Finley's one of Finley's devious step siblings in a Cinderella oh. story, Starstruck. What can you share about him and this story? It's such a different character for me. I've played the bad guys so many times, but this is my first time. It was just kind of like a fish out of water situation that it was a, a straight up comedy. Like I've done comedic elements to characters before, but it, this was a straight up comedy for this character. And he was so much fun. He's just so, so think, thinks he's so in charge and so evil and sinister, but he's just so dumb and, and oblivious at the same time. Um, and I had just had the best time working with all them and Bailey and Michael and, and Lillian and April. So much fun. Shout out to my, my fellow evil step family. I've always wanted to be evil step sister, so I got the chance. <laughs> yeah, finally you got the chance so many years yeah. down the road. Um, we saw in the trailer, <laughs> he, you mentioned the fish out of water. He likes fish fingers. We know that. Oh, and great. Instead of the theme song to Full House, he knows the theme song to Fuller House. So obviously- That's what I was kind of curious about on set. And I was, I was asking the director, he's like, is this just because he's like, it's, it's a different generation? I get into like, yeah, that's why he thinks it's Fuller House. I was like, cause to me, it'll always be Full House. And I, I guess know. that's that I'm almost 30, but I'm still playing an 18 year old when I shave. <laughs> that, was, that was brilliant to me. I was like, I guess I'm still looking young enough. I mean, that's a positive thing in terms of the range of roles you can play, I guess. For sure. For sure. So you mentioned Bailey Madison. You two played siblings on an episode of The Haunting Hour 10 years ago. Had you seen each other prior to being reunited on set last year? 
we did not see each other for a full 10 years until I saw her at the, um, the read through for the movie. Big hug. She's like, she's as awesome as I remember, but she was like 10 before, but she was such a grown up little 10 year old who was all about the work. Um, but it was so cool to see her grown up into like a full on, like her own woman who still cares so much about the work. She changed in all the ways you'd expect someone growing up would change, but also didn't lose that love for the job that she had as a kid, which is really great to see. She's always been passionate about the work since a young age. Um, so I'm so happy to hear that. Tell me about set on this small town atmosphere. For Cinderella? Yeah. I mean, it was great. I mean, it's, it's Langley, you know? <laughs> it's Langley, that's where we do it. Um, but I guess it was supposed to be Iowa, I believe. And it was great. I, I, it's, oh, that's the funny part of it actually is our, our farmhouse in Cinderella was actually Bailey in my house in The Haunting Hour. It's the exact same set. 10 years later, same siblings, same set. It was pretty cool. Did you get to play with any farm animals, ride a horse? Uh, I know those are on stage. Yeah, me and my, my biggest villain for my character in, in, in Cinderella is John Hamm the pig. We don't get along. I want to turn him into bacon. He uh, hates me for logical reasons. Logical. <laughs> um, let's talk about music. You have a Spotify playlist, Dix Picks, great songs Dicks for those Dicks. who haven't checked it out. But you also show support for some of your The 100 co-stars like Chris Larkin, William Miller and their new music releases. How much fun is it now to follow along with, with their careers and their new projects? I mean, it's amazing, especially because you, you know, you work with them, you see how passionate and talented these guys are every day, even when they're acting, which was, you know, their first and foremost, but then Chris and, and William, uh, both together, had this other passion for music as well. I'm like, I have a passion for music, but I, I, I'm not a musician. <laughs> and those guys are, and, and they, they go out and they prove it, and I'm so proud of them. And then other co-stars like Lindsay Morgan, she's in Walker now. So it's always, I think it's so wholesome to see when you kind of come together and you um, really root for one another. And that's what being a part of the 100, the 100 family is all about, right? After seven years, it's kind of hard not to be, you know? It's hard, it's hard not to. Music-wise, have you bought any tickets for concerts in the, the fall or next year? Not yet, not yet. I haven't even looked who's coming. Like if, if I find out someone that I really love is coming, if the Nationals coming, I'll go see them. But I've seen them four times already, but I'll, I'll continue to see them. You must miss live music though. I do, I was always a big concert guy, but I, I, I admittedly wasn't the biggest concert person I know. Like I have friends that go every week to every two weeks. I'll go to four concerts a year kind of thing. Um, so I love concerts, but not, I'm not hurting as bad as I know some other people are hurting for the lack of live music. Hopefully, um, though it makes its return, you get to see some of your favorite acts again next year. Hopefully you do as well. On Instagram, you still get tagged daily in new fan arts, fan videos, edits. Do you ever look at what you're tagged in and take that trip down memory lane? Secretly? All the time all the time, especially for someone who like barely ever posts. So it seems like I'm never on there. Rhiannon will tell you I'm guilty of checking Instagram probably more often than I should. It's fun though, right? Like you're seeing a it lot is. of scenes. I put, limit on I put my app limit on. I found out from my friend Jameson the other day that you could do that. So I have Instagram on a 30 minute daily timer. So as soon as it's up, you're out. Can't, can't open it anymore. That must limit the screen time. That's good. I just found out that I'm down 15% from last week. And yeah. it even tracks your stats. It's not just like for, for walking and stuff like that. It's all, yeah. everything now has like AI. It's crazy. It's, yeah, it's all too far. It's gone too far, but maybe it's helpful. I don't know. I, I'm sure that in 10 years time, we'll be looking back and I don't know. There'll be, maybe there'll be flying cars by then. Who knows?
I feel like if we wanted to have them, we could have them. I just, I just, you know, there is the technology. We can fly, so it just depends on what you consider a flying car. Like, isn't a small plane that? And if or you're going like, to speed as a car is going, yeah. let's let's just keep it on the ground. What's the point? I don't need people outside my window in cars. That's what I don't need. That's a this fact. That's really actually a really good rationalization. Have flying cars. You can you can keep me on the road, and I'm fine with that. And our wild card question for you: If you got to invent Willy Wonka's three course dinner chewing gum, which stuff? would it be comprised of? So, okay, so there's three different meals in the one flavor of gum. You guys always got something weird. Okay, I'm gonna go, but it's gum, so it'd be weird to have a savory gum, but, okay, I'm gonna go buffalo wings for the starter because you could do a hot sauce thing and it'd be similar to, you know, there's like cinnamon gum, so spicy gum exists. Okay, buffalo wing starter. And then it turns into, I need something to cool it down a little bit. Like a, let's just go for like a, okay, I'm gonna keep it in the same thing. It's gonna be fast food type of deal. So buffalo wings into a burger, like a really good cheeseburger, followed by, a chocolate malt, like a frozen malt chocolate ice cream thing. Just cool it all down. I like that answer. It sounds like a complete meal. So if you'd it's eat it, meal. I'm sure other people would eat it. There's, I mean, there's, you know, that whole meal would have a lot of calories to it, but like treat yourself. Why don't you do it? treat yourself uh i like how we're ending this interview off thank you so much for taking the time to chat really appreciate it as always thank you make sure to catch richard in a cinderella story starstruck june 29th digital release july 13th on dvd and we will see you next time thank you you too